Jill, I know you're still on the on the call. Hear that? It sounds like she's about to say a word that begins with R E, maybe even a C there, and then she stops herself. You know, like recording. We've all been waiting for a proof of life moment of Joe Biden. It's been almost a week now since we last saw him. He was scheduled to do that fundraiser in Nevada. And then at the last minute with the crowd gathered in the room, uh, they canceled. They said he had COVID. Uh, there are a lot of strange reports coming out of Las Vegas with the Metro Police saying that they were alerted that there was a medical emergency and Biden had to get to the hospital. Then they called that off and said, no, we're going to go to the airport. We'll go to Johns Hopkins, which is a hospital in near Baltimore, and then they just decided to fly on to Delaware so he can recover at home from COVID. Uh, and then since then, we have not heard from him at all, other than that moment he stumbled down the stairs of Air Force One, the short stairs. He could barely make down, and he could literally not get into a car. He needed a person's assistance to lift his legs into the waiting SUV. Since then, the only thing we've heard from Joe Biden is this letter we're told he wrote and put out uh, announcing that he would no longer seek the presidency and then that he was endorsing Kamala Harris. This is weird. Things like this don't happen, not in this fashion. At the very least, you would think in that letter, Joe Biden would have said why he's deciding not to run for four more years, but he didn't say that. He just said that it's in the best interest of the party and then the country. Uh, at the very least, you'd think you'd see a still photograph, a picture of Joe Biden. Lord knows we see plenty of pictures of him when he's in his Delaware home. But no, there are no photographs at all. We also have that strange report of his brother, Frank Biden, saying that now that he's out of the race, they'll be able to spend what little time they have left together. And that, of course, was quickly disavowed. The questions stack up on top of each other. None of this is normal. And we, the American people, deserve to have a functioning president of the United States. We got a letter yesterday from his physician, Kevin O'Connor, who's frankly lost all credibility given the lies that he's partaken in over the last three and a half years. Uh, the letter says that he's recovering nicely from COVID and he's, func he's performing all of his functions as president. But we know for a fact that he isn't performing all of his functions as president. So what's going on here? Well, yesterday, Kamala Harris, who inherited a complete and total campaign apparatus from Joe Biden, uh, visited her brand new campaign headquarters in Delaware. It's amazing if you think about it. Just like the beginning of her political career, she's gotten a huge boost, a huge leg up, leg up from a man 30 years older than her. This old, much older man has given her everything she needs that she didn't really have to work for. I mean, that we know of. Anyway, uh, at that visit at the campaign headquarters, we're told that Joe Biden addressed his campaign manager and the staff via telephone. I say we're told that because I can't verify that this is Joe Biden calling in live to his headquarters. We'll listen to it together, but then we've got questions. Here's uh, the beginning. I know yesterday's news was surprising and uh, it was hard for you to hear, but it was the right thing to do. It's, uh, it, I, I know it's hard because you poured your heart and soul into me. Say, so help us win this thing. Help me get this nomination. Help me win the nomination and then go on to win the, win the, the presidency. But, you know, you're an amazing team, but We've got a great, great, I think we made the right decision. All right. So um, first of all, we notice that the president is noticeably slurring his speech big time. Now, that could be due to medication, I suppose. It could be due to some kind of physical uh, side effect to the COVID, I suppose, or perhaps something else that they're not telling us he's suffering from. But there's definitely a slur in his speech, much more noticeable than the typical slurring of his speech that we've grown accustomed to over the last four plus years. Uh, also, because this is a telephone call, I, I think it's fair to assume that he's reading this statement and reading what he's saying to the campaign headquarters. Or maybe this is just actually pre-recorded and has been edited together, and they're just pretending that it's live. More on that in a moment, but let's uh, jump to another part of this address to his campaign staff. 
<laughs> Jolie, if I didn't have COVID, I'd be sitting there with you, standing there with you. I'm, I'm so proud of what you've all done. And, uh, but this COVID obviously going to keep me out of, out of people's hair for the next uh, three or four days. Uh, let me pause there for a minute. It is uh, interesting. You know, having COVID is the perfect excuse for having to isolate oneself, right? But here's the thing. This president has had COVID before, and he hasn't been this kind of isolated. We've still seen him. There's still been picture or video of him, number one. Number two, we've all had COVID. So we know what it's like, and we know that if you're well enough to make a phone call, you should be well enough to make a, a Zoom call or any other kind of video address. I mean, this is the President of the United States, and they've got millions and millions and millions of dollars in their campaign coffers. Why couldn't they just set up a television there so we could see the man? But clearly, they are going out of their way deliberately to not let Joe Biden be seen, which raises questions, plenty of questions. Listen to him slur a little bit here, and I will uh, show you my evidence that he's actually reading these remarks instead of actually speaking like a normal human being off the top of his head. Uh, be clear here, Joe Biden, they've decided, is incapable of just having a natural conversation with his campaign staff to wish them well and explain why he did what he did, even though he never really explained why he did what he did. No, they can't let him naturally have a conversation they had to write this out, and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove what he's saying here is written out in just a moment. Listen. But I'm going to be on the road, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to, it's, it's, it's kept me away a little bit, but, you know, I want people to remember that what we have done has been incredible, and we get so much more we're going to get done. Yeah, the uh, narrative of what they've done is so incredible is really starting to build here. You hear everybody saying it. What, objectively speaking, is the greatest presidency in American history. We'll break that apart in just a moment. But here's one of the smoking guns I've got as to the fact that this is a written statement that Joe Biden is reading, that this was all like sort of scripted out for him. Watch this. And by the way, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be out there in the campaign with her, with Kamala. I'm going to be working like hell, both as a sitting president, getting legislation passed, as well as in campaigning. You know, what we still need to save is democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community, is a danger to the nation. Did you catch that? Trump is a danger to the community. That makes no sense at all. Why would you ever refer to Donald Trump if you really do think that Donald Trump is a danger and he this is in the context of saving our democracy? You would not then compare him to, you know, a, a shoplifter or a uh, somebody uh, going 50 in a 25 mile zone in downtown near a school. That would be a danger to the community. The script that he had said he's a danger to the country. But of course, he has trouble reading things, too. We've seen that over and over and over again. Now, usually when he's delivering remarks and he's reading from a teleprompter and he starts to read the wrong words, he just stops, freezes himself and says, anyway. Or he says, I better not even talk about that because I'll get into trouble or some stupid sort of bailout that he's tried to do over the years. But here uh, he doesn't. He's got his script and he calls Donald Trump a danger to the community. It is democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community. He's a danger to the nation. Then he says a danger to the nation. That makes no sense. Why? Why Has, has he ever been described by Joe Biden in the past as a danger to the community? What community? To the neighborhood where he's sitting in Delaware? To the neighborhood around the White House? Community is nonsensical. And that's not a slip of the tongue. Why would you say community when you mean country unless you're reading the word country, but you misread it because your eyes aren't working, because you're just that debilitated from whatever medical condition he's got that they're not telling us about. Does this sound like COVID to you? You've had it. Did it make you slur your speech like this? You know, what we still need to save is democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community, is a danger to the nation. Listen, I could be wrong. This is the problem with the lack of transparency, with the lack of actual proof that the man is alive. 
with all of the lies. Forgive me for not believing what they're saying right now about Joe Biden. But we know for a fact that all of them at the White House, in Congress, in the family and in the media have been lying about his health this entire time. We know it now. Now they're starting to, oh, well, yeah, we saw this a couple of years ago, but nobody said anything. Well, oh, we saw this. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday about a meeting, the only meeting or last meeting that Joe Biden had with the Democrat caucus in the House of Representatives on Capitol Hill in 2021, where he was incoherent. And everybody knew then. But what have we heard? Oh, he's at the top of his game. He's sharp as a tack. He's never been more brilliant. He's never been more capable. So forgive me for not believing that this is Joe Biden suffering from COVID calling into his campaign headquarters. I don't even know if it's Joe Biden. I don't think he's suffering from COVID. I think he's suffering from something worse. And I don't know if that's him calling in live. I think it's something recorded that they're playing to make you think that he's calling in live. And guess what? I've been given no evidence to suggest otherwise, other than believe us, trust us. We're telling you the truth. The same people who have lied this entire time. Why do I think that it's recorded instead of live? Well, if you haven't seen it yet, here's Kamala Harris jumping up there to interact with old Joe. It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do, everybody here does. It's Thank mutual. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kids. I'm watching you, kids. I love you. I love you, Joe. Boy, is she charming. She's just so charming. Really, it gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. Everything about her is so genuine. Uh, in fact, she's so genuine that she almost gave away the story. Did you hear what she had to say there when she said, Joe, I, I think you're still on the call? But right before she said, I think you're on the call, she said something else. It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. Hear that? It sounds like she's about to say a word that begins with R E, maybe even a C there, and then she stops herself, you know, like recording. I know you're still on the recording. Just think of that in your head right now. Think, Joe, I know you're still on the recording. And then listen to what she said. So good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. What what word could she possibly have been saying instead of call? What, what did she correct there? What was she about to say? President's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. I know you're still on the recliner with your feet up, relaxing with COVID. That's what she was saying. Yeah, Joe, I still you're no I, I know you're still on the recliner. Of course, this whole thing is being sponsored by Lazy Boy. Now it makes sense. She not at all was about to say, I know you're still on the recording. Hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. And we I trust her. Why shouldn't we trust her? I mean, just a week before the debate, she said that the president was as sharp as a deck. The best he's ever been, right? So, I mean, we saw just how great he was. She then went on to try to um, paint this picture of what a great president he is. Joe, are you watching? You hear this clapping? <laughs> Can you see it? I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll get to that in a minute. But um, this thing, this is one of the things anyone says, oh, you know, obviously it was live because look at that interaction. No, that's that's something that can be pre-scripted and pre-arranged. You know, Kamala, just go out there and get everybody clapping and then ask Joe if he's uh, watching because we've got him saying I'm watching. That That's not proof that this thing was live. It may be. It may be. Here's the thing. If it is, why are they acting so weird? Why is everything about this so weird? And since they've lied up until this point, why should we not assume they continue to lie? Okay, here's Kamala extolling the virtues of what a great president Joe Biden is. In fact, wait, no, not a great president the greatest president ever. And so I'm now I'm getting back to you, Joe. Um, I will tell you all, it has been one of the greatest honors of my life, truly. 
to serve as vice president to our President Joe Biden. Joe's legacy of accomplishment, just over a, a lifetime, but just over the last three and a half years, is unmatched in modern history. In one term, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who served two terms in office. I am so excited that this is going to be what they're running on. That she, she's going to run on the legacy of achievement of Joe Biden. Go for it, honey. The, I, first of all, if I may, if you're Bill Clinton or you're Barack Obama or you're a Democrat and you worked in those administrations and you have this cackling moron stepping up and saying that he has done more in just one term than any other president has done in two terms. And you're like, you're Clinton and Obama. And you're like, wait a second, we had two terms. Are you telling me that he's done more than we did? I mean, right there, it's an insulting to them. And of course, it's insulting to your intelligence. But if this is what they're running on, on their record of success about how great, oh, you may be feeling pain right now with prices and inflation and crime and and national security debacles and and the border security. And, but, but, but no, 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 you're wrong. What you don't get, what you're too stupid to understand is that this is the greatest presidency in American history. I think that's a real winning message, especially since as uh, as Peter Hassan, the editor of Free Beacon, pointed out, uh, this is the latest approval disapproval rating for Joe Biden. And it tracks from January 2021 there when he took office. Uh, the red line is disapproval. He came in with 30 percent disapproval. He came in with 55 percent approval. And only about halfway through his first year in office, those lines crossed and they have never gone back. As of this moment in his presidency, he has a 56.2% disapproval rating and a 38% approval rating. And that 38% approval rating, I think, is because he just dropped out of the race. And so people approve of that. It's actually a little worse than that in reality. That kind of approval rating does not coincide with the greatest presidency of modern American history, unless your perspective is that the American people who are reflected in that poll are too stupid to get it. So pick your poison, Kamala Harris. This is your campaign now. You let us know what you're going to be running on. Things are super duper great. Couldn't be better. Record of achievement. And anyone who disagrees is just a moron. I like that campaign messaging. I like the odds that Trump and his team have against him.